Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, it's spring, summer's coming, and it is sporadic E season. What does that mean? Well, that means that occasionally during this time of year, the E layer of the ionosphere suddenly becomes partially reflective, and we have openings on VHF, including six meters. Six meters is the commonly referred to as the magic band because most of the time it's dead but when it opens up boy does it open up during six meter openings i've worked many states away with very little power i mean i had a one watt radio one watt six meter uh, transceiver in my car and i had a uh, two meter five eighths wave mag mount antenna which by the way if you have a two meter five eighths wave mag mount you'll find that it behaves as a quarter wave on six and can quite often be used for six meters. So there's a little tip for you. Uh, anyway, when six meters opens up, it's all kinds of fun because when it opens up, boy, does it open up, man. Phew, there's suddenly just tons of activity. Well, here's something that many new hams might not know and some of your experienced hams may not be aware of or may have never tried. There are repeaters on six meters, just like on two, just like on two meters, they are FM repeaters with a separate input and output frequency and crystal clear FM audio. And when there's a six meter opening, it might be worthwhile to take a look at some of the six meter repeater frequencies and see if you can hit one of those repeaters and have an FM QSO with somebody. I've done that myself in the past. Um, had an FM QSO on six with a guy in Florida. I was in northern Indiana, and I think the repeater was in Louisiana or Tennessee or somewhere. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's pretty neat when it happens. Uh, so what I'm doing today is a tips video for ICOM 7300 owners, how to set up a 6 meter repeater on your ICOM 7300. I am fortunate to be in the range of a 6 meter repeater here, so I don't have to rely on an opening. So let's go to the computer real quick and take a look at the repeater book and uh, how you can find six meter repeaters across the country. One popular site online for searching for repeaters is repeaterbook.com. It's a complete list, mostly up to date, although occasionally I do find repeaters that are listed that are not active. But they do try to tell you that on the site. So we'll start here and we'll try to find if there's any six meter repeaters near me. I clicked on North American repeaters and uh, let's see here, how does this work? Location. This is my first time directly searching on repeater books, so let's see how easy it is to use. Okay, location. Enter a landmark city and state or zip code. So let's, uh, let's look around Kingman, Arizona. radius of 25 miles and we get a list of all the repeaters on all bands in the uh, 25 mile radius of Kingman, Arizona. Uh, if I want to search for a specific band, six meters. All right, search. Hey, look at that. Here's our Kingman, Arizona repeater listed. So we can use this tool to find out if there's any repeaters near us. Let's, uh, let's widen that search out. Okay, so we can go up to 25 miles in this. Let's, let's make that 200 miles. Oh, now we've got several listed several in California. Look at these. All these six meter repeaters. Tons of them. Uh, wow, Las Vegas. I'll have to play around and see how many of these I can hit. Well, if we don't have an opening, they're probably too far away. <laughs> oh, there's one in Prescott, which isn't too far from me. I'll have to check that one out too. Okay, uh, let's find Kingman. Here it is. Right here. 
Kingman, Arizona. Uh, the information that we have here is the output frequency of the repeater, 51.94 megahertz. The offset, and there are two um, offsets that are commonly used for six meter repeaters. The most common is one megahertz. So in this case, this Las Vegas repeater, 53.01 is the output frequency minus 1 megahertz, so you'd set your transmitter to 52.01 and this is the PL tone. PL stands for private line. It's a sub-audible tone at a very low frequency, meaning you generally can't hear it with your ears, sometimes you can, but it is used as a, as a tone-coded squelch for the repeater. So the repeater is not going to open up uh, on the receiver unless it hears this frequency. And the reason that they do that is usually to prevent interference between machines on, an a, on the same frequency that are within um, a certain distance of each other. Let's say, for example, you had two repeaters that used the same frequency pair, and they were only about 50 miles apart. Normally, you're probably not going to interfere with each other. Um, propagation is right, conditions are right, it's possible that a station trying to talk through one of the repeaters might also trip the other repeater. So generally what they'll do is they'll have different PL tones, so a station operating on one repeater is not going to trip the other repeater and so on. So that's, that's what a PL tone is generally used for, is to help prevent interference between machines that are on nearby frequencies or the same frequencies but within the same geographic region close enough that sometimes you could have interference. That's how they prevent it, PL tones. So Kingman has a, an output frequency of 51.94. That's what you'd set your receiver to. Uh, an offset of negative 5.5 megahertz or 500 kilohertz. So that means the input to the repeater, your transmitter, you're going to want it to be 500 kilohertz below the output. So instead of 51.94, it would be 51.44, which is 94 minus, um, 940 minus 500 is 440. So 51.44 would be the input. And we have a PL tone of 100 hertz. This repeater is operated by KA6NLS here in Kingman. It is an open repeater, uh, meaning it's open to anybody to use. Um, closed, I, you know, I'm not sure uh, I, how they close a repeater off. <laughs> Unless that simply means that it's off air, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, they might use digital squelch and make it members only, who knows. Uh, well, anyway, what we're interested in is Kingman, and we have our information here. 51.94 megahertz is the output negative 500 kilohertz offset and 100 hertz PL tone. Let's go to the ICOM and set it up to operate on this repeater. Okay, so we're going to set our repeater up on the uh, ICOM. <clears throat> I'm on the 6 meter band and what we're going to do to operate a repeater we need to transmit on one frequency and receive on another frequency. Uh, we need to receive on the repeater's output and we're going to transmit to its input. Now in order to do that we're going to operate in what's called split mode. We have two VFOs on the ICOM 7300 and most modern transceivers are the same way. They've got, they've got at least two VFOs. And when you operate split you will be transmitting on one VFO and receiving on the other. Usually you'll be receiving on VFO A and transmitting on VFO B. You could do it the other way around, it doesn't really matter. In my case I'll be receiving on VFO A and transmitting on VFO B. So the first thing I need to do is set VFO A to the repeater's output. And we know that its output is 51.94. I think. Check my notes. Yep, 51.94. And we want to be in FM mode, so we'll switch to FM mode. And then we'll dial up to 51.94. Okay, this is our repeater output. 
I'm going to set my squelch to cut down the static. Uh, so that's VFO A. Now VFO B, and I'll switch to B, is going to be the repeater's input. This is what we'll be transmitting on. So we'll switch this to FM and we'll dial it up to 51.44, which is the repeater's input. 500 kilohertz below the output. We also need to enable that PL tone, remember? Uh, this repeater needs a 100, mega, or 100 hertz tone. So we'll go to function, here's tone, we'll hold that button down. Uh, that lets us then adjust the uh, repeater input tone and we'll set that to 100 hertz. And uh, it was off initially, we'll turn it on. So now we are set to generate the tone. Uh, we are on 51.44, which is the input for VFOB. All right, let me switch back to VFOA. And we'll turn on split. We hit the split button. Split appears up here. That's our transmit frequency. So you can see that we are now set up for the repeater, theoretically. I'm close to it, so I've only got my power set to 1% or 1 watt. I should be able to hit it just fine. Let's see. There you go. That sounded like a repeater, didn't it? This is KB9RLW, Portable 7, listening. Anybody around this morning? Apparently no one's listening. Well, I'll uh, bump my buddy James, the famous YouTube extra, and we'll see if he can get on six so we can do a quick QSO through the repeater. So now that I've got the repeater set up and I know it's working, I want to write it to a memory. Now when I first got the 7300, I went through the manual's instructions for writing memories and it was a lot of steps. It didn't make a lot of sense. It took me a while to figure it out and it was, you know, it was just crazy. Well, what I've discovered is there's a much easier way to write memories. This is probably old news to most of you that have had a 7300 for a while, but once I've got everything set up the way I want it, okay, the receiver set to the output frequency, the VFOB, the split, the tone, everything's working, I can go to menu memory and I can select the memory slot that I want to work with uh, and then I'll, it'll drop me back out but I can go back in now memory so slot 6 which has nothing in it is highlighted see this little box over here with three bars in it if you tap that the top option is memory write and it shows you the information on your current VFO if I hit that write memory yes boom and there it is, 5194 FM split. Just that easy to write to memory. I don't know why the manual has so many steps when all you need to do is hit that little bar. Um, this, uh, this menu will also let you do things like edit the name of the memory and clear it. I'm going to edit the name. Kingman 6M Okay, good enough. Back. Cancel edit? No, I want to save the edit. Uh, enter? Okay, there we go. Kingman, 6 meter. Go back out. So now if I go to memory mode... Oops. There it is. And Kingman 6 meter is right there in small text. So, bingo, we wrote the memory. So that's pretty much how you do it, how you set up the 7300 for uh, 6 meter repeaters. Not too difficult. Let's see if we can talk to James. KB7TBT, KB7TBT from KB9RLW, Portable 7. Hey James, well you're full quieting into the repeater. I'm only running one watt. How am I getting into it? Well Kevin, you're sounding real good over here. Not a problem at all. The six meter repeater's working real good. 
All right, James. Well, hey, thanks for the test uh, and the help with the video. 73, we'll talk to you later. KB7TBT from KB9RLW Portable 7. Bye-bye. You on Bravo 7, Tango Bravo Tango. So there you go. That's how you set up the ICOM 7300 to work 6-meter repeaters. Uh, hopefully one of these days we'll have a good sporadic e-opening and I can play around with some of those other machines. And uh, hopefully you too will have some fun playing around with 6-meter FM repeaters on your ICOM 7300. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.